Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for this presentation. My name is Andy Munitz. I'm National Training Manager for Sony's Professional Solutions Division. And in today's presentation, we're going to touch on some evolutionary products in our ever-growing XD Cam lineup, as well as touch on a little bit of audio, one of my favorite topics. And we'll finish off with a little jewel to tell you about. So we're going to start talking about our brand new PMW 400 camcorder. This is a shoulder mount camcorder, and it is a new addition to our lineup. And our effort is to constantly add features and bring the cost down. And this camera really kind of hits that sweet spot. So this camera is a shoulder mount, obviously. It uses three two-thirds inch CMOS image sensors, what we call our Exmor image sensors. And that is our Sony branded version of Exmor. Just a quick little aside, because I don't think I'll be able to touch on it later. Many of you might not know, Sony is the world's largest imager manufacturer. We make millions and millions of images every month. Imagers that go in some of the cell phones you're all using, in addition, obviously, to our professional products and cameras and all that stuff. But we put so much effort into designing the best image sensors that we can possibly come up with. And to me, once light goes through a lens, it hits an image sensor. And if you don't capture it there, you don't capture it. It's hard to make it up. So imagers are really critical. Our CMOS image sensors are extra special. I won't go into detail here, but they're very, very low noise. We put an A to D converter at the bottom of every single column of pixels instead of having just a handful on a separate chip. And that keeps noise really, really far down. It also prevents one of the common artifacts of CMOS imagers, which is kind of jello cam. So we keep that to an absolute minimum. But what's really important is very low noise image and low light sensitivity. But one of the biggest things about the PMW 400 is that we've now added a new codec capability. We've increased its capability up until 50 megabit HD 422. And it records MXF files on S by S cards, and there's slots in this camera for those. The camera also, though, can take a codec capability and increase it to a brand new format that's being used now called XAVC. And XAVC is 100 megabit per second codec that we're currently using in our F5 and 55 cameras, our high-end cinema cameras. So it's interesting to think that this brand new codec is now finding its way in the shoulder mount, field production, news gathering, so the camera will be able to do that as well. And certainly the camera, the 400, is format selectable and bitrate selectable, and you can see all of the logos for the various legacy formats that we've had over the years, and we have made every effort to keep those in the camera's capability. The camera also adds some very new features, and we'll go into more depth on this in another few slides, but we've added a Wi-Fi capability to the camera, and that adds 3G, 4G, LTE, wireless capability for transferring files, but as I said, we'll get into that in a little bit. We've added a new capability in the 400 called 3DNR, that is three-dimensional noise reduction. I mentioned that one of the benefits of the Exmor CMOS imager technology is incredibly low noise, but you can always go a little bit farther. And 3DNR, noise reduction, uses time. It can look back frames and see noise patterns and correct for it on the current frame. So that adds a little bit of extra noise reduction. Audio is very important to Sony, and we'll talk about that near the end of this presentation, but we've increased the PMW 400's capabilities of recording audio. It always recorded linear PCM, LPCM mode, but we've increased it from 16-bit up to 24-bit capability, and that's four channels. Another thing that I think is very important, we've got a viewfinder that is best in its class. We've upped the resolution of this little viewfinder to 960 by 540. When you think about a machine, a tool, something that you use, it has to become part of you. And your interface to that technology, to that camera, is really important. So seeing a higher resolution image on a viewfinder really, really helps create that bond and strengthen that bond in what you're seeing. And certainly the camera is lightweight and has very low power consumption, largely due to the fact that its CMOS imagers use a whole lot less power as well. Another issue with CMOS imagers that some of you may be aware of is there's an artifact called flash band. And flash band is, say you're a news photographer and you're in an opening where there's a lot of still photographers firing off flashes all the time. Well, the way that a CMOS imager integrates its image is it reads it from the top to the bottom, lines out. And depending on when the flash goes off, 
if you look at the image on the right side of this picture, you can see where the bottom half of the image has flash on and the top half doesn't. Well, the flash band reducer is a special algorithm that is included that detects this issue in a frame and will correct for it inside the camera before recording that flash frame. And that feature can be turned on and off, by the way. So basically in this camera, we have exceptionally low jello motion problems, and we've also given you the ability to correct for the other major artifact of CMOS images, which is flash band. Moving right along, we have added additional interfaces to the camera. We have two HDSDI ports on the back, so that means you can hook up more monitors to look at. The director can have his own to look at, as well as the camera operator, and they can look on separate monitors. But also for monitoring purposes, we've added an HDMI connector, and that can feed not only professional displays, but also consumer-grade domestic-use TVs that have HDMI connectors as well, just adding flexibility for what you have in the field. This adds, obviously, convenience and operational flexibility during the production. Now, the PMW 400 is available in four different packages. Starting at the top, the 400K comes packaged with a 16x Fujinon lens. The KCE adds a 50-pin adapter, and that allows you to configure the camera for studio operation and multi-camera use. We also offer the camera without a lens, and also without a lens but with the 50-pin adapter. Just to give you a rough idea how we've been attempting to bring the price and the cost of entry into one of these cameras down, the fully loaded version with everything, the lens and the 50-pin connector, comes in at a roughly $19,000 street price. So that's really hitting a sweet spot. A viewfinder and the stereo microphone are included in all the packages. And if you notice at the bottom of the screen, one thing that gets added when you put on the 50-pin interface, which generally gets built into the camera when the camera ships from the factory, but can be added afterwards by bringing it back to a service facility, it adds a digital extender function so that you can effectively zoom into a given image, and that's very useful. Since there's so much resolution, it looks really excellent. You'd be tasked to tell whether that digital extender function is even on or off. And it can also be used with other lenses other than the Fujinon lens. The studio camera solution that can come when you package the camera with a 50-pin connector allows you to use either our digital triax or optical fiber transmission adapters. And that obviously allows great flexibility for live productions and for long-distance transmission, and you get to maintain your very high signal quality. So that's it for the PMW 400. We have also added a new camera called the PMW 300. Now, many of you are probably aware of a camera we've had in the line for many years. It was very popular called an EX3. There was also its uh, little brother called an EX1. And the EX1 eventually became an EX1R and added a lot of functionality. But the EX3 never became a 3R. So think of the PMW 300 as the biggest brother and the new outgrowth of the EX3. The first thing is that it's three half-inch height Exmor full HD CMOS image sensors, full 1920 by 1080, and it comes with a 14 times Fujinon lens. But this is an interchangeable lens, so if you've got other lenses you want to use for specialty shots, by all means, go for it. But the other thing that we have added to the camera is, again, the 50 megabit MPEG HD422 capability, which is a higher-end broadcast codec, if you will. We've also allowed for the PMW 300 to be future upgradable to that XAVC format that I was talking about earlier, which records at 100 megabits at 10-bit quality. And certainly the camera's format and bitrate selectable and covers a lot of the legacy formats that we referred to earlier. We've also added the quarter HD viewfinder, the 960 by 540, since it's obviously very important to that man-machine interface. We have a flip-up eyepiece makes it looking at menus easier. It also allows for a producer or somebody on the side to look while you're capturing something. We've added a retractable chest pad mechanism. You can see in the lower right picture. And that allows for, even though it's not specifically a shoulder mount camcorder, it allows for ergonomics of a smaller camcorder but gives you that steady capability. We've added a four position ND filter where in the past we had a three position filter. We've added the 164th setting. The camera now has slow and quick motion. This was something that got added a lot earlier to the EX1R that the EX1 didn't have. So slow and quick motion to this size camera, this price range camera is a welcome feature. 
We've added the ability to have various picture profiles, color peaking displays for aiding in focus. We have now a cache recording up to 15 seconds. So if you're sitting there waiting for something to happen and you don't want to burn up all of your file space of your card, you can have the camera effectively in record pause mode with this cache buffer going. And as soon as something happens, you've got 15 seconds within which to hit the record button and you will have captured what happened in the previous 15 seconds. Very, very useful. Not that you're going to sit at a street corner and wait for a car accident, but can imagine if you're waiting for an iceberg to calve off. You don't want to sit there running a camera all day long waiting for that iceberg to break apart. But cache recording can help there. And we have something called continuous recording. A lot of news stations, when they send photogs out during the day, a photog may come back with 200 clips. And if you can imagine with all the photogs that are out there shooting for a news station, they come back and they could collect thousands and thousands of clips every single day. So continuous recording allows you when you're in the HD 422 mode using what's called UDF to have all of those multiple start, stop, start, stop all show up as one big file so that when you bring it in, you can manage it and sort of scrub through it on the NLE timeline. So that's a capability that we've added here. The camera has internal stereo microphones, always a welcome thing for capturing those stereo ambiences. Just having a mono shotgun sort of leaves the stereo image out of the picture, but having that built into the camera allows you to record audio that can come in handy in post. We have two XLR audio connectors, and again, the audio linear PCM mode, which allows for now up to 24-bit recording at four channels. We also have the two HD-SDI outputs, a composite output, an iLink output for DV and HDV, in and out, and we also have the HDMI output as well, the USB interface for transferring files off of the camera. The camera also allows for multi-camera operation. It features a gen lock in and time code in and out interface, and we've also included a 700 protocol remote interface for remote control here of various camera settings using our RMB170 remote control unit that's pictured at the bottom of the image can help setting up a camera nicely and matching cameras and things like that. So here we're going to now branch into the concept of wireless that I briefly spoke about earlier. You know, when we think about workflow, workflow has been a common topic for many years, and many people think of workflow as really just what happens in the post suite. How do I get the file from this format to that file? But workflow is the entire package. It's from when you capture the images out in the street and how do you get them to where they're going. And these new wireless adapters look at that end of the workflow. So specifically, we have two models called a CBK WA100 and a CBK WA101. These are wireless adapters. These are compact and very affordable wireless solutions. Just to let you know up front, these things are roughly a street price of about $1,500. And you'll be able to add the following capabilities. It enables wireless transmission of your field captured data over Wi-Fi, over 3G, over 4G, and LTE. It certainly reduces the time and cost of production and allows faster and cost-efficient IT and network operations. How do you get your file back to the station? How do you get it into the server? It achieves a tight integration with our XDCAM HD422 lineup. It allows you to do a couple of things, well, more than a couple of things, but two main things are that you've got high-resolution files that you've just captured within the camera, and if you want to get those high-resolution files back to the TV station, for example, you can now transfer those high-resolution files from the field to the cloud or into an in-house server if you're using Wi-Fi. But obviously, in the field to the cloud, you would use the 3G, 4G, or LTE interface. The unit also has the ability to create, record, and transfer what are called compressed proxy files. And the proxy file is a smaller compressed version, it's still a very viewable and nice looking version of that. And you can use that for a lot of things. You could send that back to the station so they can start editing on that if it gets back much more quickly than your full res files. Also, you can have a mobile device, a phone, a tablet, right there on site, and a producer could be linked up to the camera over Wi-Fi and can look at the clips as you capture them or can go back and search various clips that you've already shot. That's a very powerful producer feature. And the Wi-Fi remote control capability even allows you to remotely control a lot of the basic functions of the camera 
from a phone or from a tablet. Imagine you've got a camera up on a crane and you want to start and stop and record and all those things are changed settings. You can do that with this simple interface module. Very, very cool. There are two versions that I mentioned. There's a WA-100 and a WA-101. The WA-100 is designed for use with a lot of our various camcorders and decks, because this is not just restricted to being used on a camcorder. You're going to put up to a deck, and it depends on if those cameras or decks have HDSDI connectors and or USB connectors, and there's various functionalities that wake up if you also have the USB capability. But the WA-101, though, specifically is designed for the PMW400 camcorder, the one we talked about earlier, and it allows for seamless attachment. There's a little plug right on the side. This module slips right into the camera, clicks down into place, and now all the HDSDI and all of those interface things are happening all automatically just by the way you've hooked it up. But you can see in the bottom picture here that with a camera with HDSDI, you just basically run those wires to it. The USB connection is for sending high-res files out of the camera, out through the adapter, and then out over the 3G, 4G LTE. Both wireless adapters effectively offer the same benefits and features, though. There's nothing that comes on the other except for the mounting capability and the integration with the camera. Both of these units come with the Wi-Fi module, but the USB cell modem is not included, so you might add that to it. So from the field, you can send your things directly back to the shop. Won't go into this detail, but this is just a slide that talks about the various integration and capabilities that happen if you use these Wi-Fi modules with certain cameras in our range, ones that have HDSDI but might not have USB and so on and so forth. And just this is a graphic that basically shows you can shoot in the field and then you can do file transfer to cloud services, or if you're in-house, you can use the Wi-Fi adapter to get it right to the server. You can remote control it from the smartphone, all the things that we just alluded to. Okay, so that's it for camera land. We're going to now move into deck land because when we come out with new cameras that have a lot of new features and codec capability, we obviously have to have a deck or multiple decks that support that functionality and those codecs. So these are the ones we're going to touch on briefly now. The PMW 1000 is a dual SBIS studio deck. You can see it has two slots for SBIS cards up in the top. But this unit also allows it to operate like a deck, linear ingest with RS-422 control. You can jog and shuttle the control and scrub through clips if you'd like. You can also clip copy to external USB hard disk drives without a PC. So you can copy files directly off. If you look at the very lower left-hand corner, there's a USB connector right there. And that allows you to copy clips directly off. You can file transfer over a network without a PC again. And you can share and transfer files and finish programs via network for both HD422 as well as the new XAVC HD operation that we spoke about a bit earlier. The unit hooks up via Gigabit Ethernet, plasma-based T and also has an HDMI output. It can support SD format as a standard feature, and the standard codecs that it supports are listed here in HD422 and 420, 50 megabit, 35 megabit, 25 megabit, and all the ones in the SD format as well. The unit also, since the F5 and F55 are high-end cinema and field production cameras, use the XAVC codec, those cameras can operate at 4K or at HD 2K modes. And this deck can also support the 2K and HD modes of XAVC. So if you shoot things on the F5 or F55 and take those cards and you want to watch them in this deck, you can do that. You can also play F555 high-speed recorded contents in slow motion and certainly playback, copy, and edit in post-production. There's an RS-422 9-pin control interface, which lets the deck be used as a feeder for linear editing style. Gigabit Ethernet for high-speed file transfer and network operation, as well as monitoring through HDMI, which just adds flexibility. The unit can be powered in multiple ways, AC-DC battery power, and that really helps out depending on where you are and what it is you're trying to do. Now, there's another deck that we have called the PMW50. This is a dual SBIS portable field deck. It's really meant for portable applications. It also now records 50 megabit in the MPEG HD422 recording as MXF files on cards. And you can also clip copy to external hard disk drives without a PC. And you can even, adding the Wi-Fi module, as you can see here, you can transmit those high-res and or proxy files over Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G, LTE with the optional adapter. 
And this unit also allows for that continuous recording that I spoke about earlier, which is making a whole bunch of tiny clips into one big long clip. Unit has a SDI IO, HDMI, composite output, supports two S by S memory cards, can do SD recording. It has to also two assignable buttons, and the two assignable buttons are kind of what do you want to put on them? But you know, one selection might be good clip. You might want to play back a bunch of clips and mark good clip in the metadata. Or you might want to have a button that says delete this clip. Anyway, you can map what you want onto those two assignable buttons and it can help things an awful lot. We have a nice little three and a half inch color LCD. It is compact and lightweight. There's also the ability, as I said, to hook up a USB hard disk drive interface and that's obviously the world we live in today. Take files from here and move them to there and these decks allow you to move these files without the need for an external PC. And what's incredible to me and I'm sure to you is the price of these little drives, these little baby drives are down to hundred dollars for a terabyte or something. You know, try to remember what it was like 15 years ago. So, the next deck I wanted to touch on briefly is something called our professional media station decks. And the idea here is that this is a bridge solution, we like to say. If you are shooting XD cam in the field and you have optical disc, but you also exist in a world where you're using S by S cards, this deck kind of bridges those two formats. It's great as a server machine for migration into an IT-centric operation, and it has various benefits that are inherited from conventional type decks, movable media and real-time video playback as well as network file access. In hybrid operation you can deal with both S by S cards and professional disk and use the right tool for the right job. You're prepared for both worlds that you might still live in. It's also future-proof for hybrid workflow even if you only use either S by S or professional disk. But here is something that makes these decks kind of special. In addition to handling XDCAM disks or S by S cards, the units also have built-in hard drives. These are like mini servers. And these internal solid state drives or hard disk drives, you can put your files on them and off of them. And they can come from the S by S cards and they can go to and all that stuff. And what that allows you to do is while you are recording a file onto these decks, as a file is being built, you can use the hard drive to output that file as it grows out over the network. So you don't have to wait for a file to be finished before you can start using it or send it somewhere else. That's kind of a very interesting application and there's all sorts of uses for that. And I'm sure people will come up with more as we go on. The units are very user friendly. You know, people are a little freaked out when if you've got a hard disk drive or a solid state drive or how do I get here, how do I get there? But this unit's control is very user friendly. It uses our traditional human interface, if you will, that is inherited from our Betacam VTRs for many, many decades. So it should be obvious what it is you're trying to do. Think of this also as little reliable servers quick boot time, they're virus free because they're not hooked up to any other servers, there's no way you're likely going to get any kind of viruses on there. And obviously we said it's compatible with S by S cards and professional disk. We have a lot of knowledge at Sony on obviously tape decks as well as server technology, so this is a very robust piece of gear. Professional media stations are available in three configurations depending on what your needs are. There's a unit where it has an internal one terabyte hard drive at the bottom and it handles just S by S cards. Moving up, you can have a one terabyte hard drive but add the capability of dealing with professional disk. And at the top, you can have a half terabyte solid state drive but handle both S by S as well as professional disk, whatever it is you need. All right, we're gonna move into audio because audio is very important to Sony. Some of you may not even know, but I always, whenever I talk about audio, I like to say, Audio without video is radio, right? Anybody know what video without audio is? It's a security camera. Boring. There's nothing going on without audio. Pay attention to audio. It's important. Anybody know? You should see now. Where does the name Sony come from? It actually comes from the Latin word for sound, Sonus. And Sony's very first product, way back, you know, late 40s, early 50s, was a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder meant as an industrial product to sell to schools that could take advantage of these things. 
We had been in the audio business for many years. We made our first professional microphone in 1952, and we made our first professional wireless microphone system in 1974. Everybody thinks of Sony as only video, but we've been doing audio for many, many years. And we now have our latest version of our wireless technology as we improve it every single time, which is called DWX series. This is a fully digital wireless scheme. Some of the things is that it has to offer the absolute highest quality. When you take a wired XLR microphone and you plug it in, you expect certain quality. When you use wireless technology, you go, eh, okay, it's gonna sound pretty good, but it's not as good as plugging. This is as good as plugging in an XLR connector, okay? It is packetized digital audio transmission, not just what is referred to as hybrid digital analog, going through an A to D converter and then using an analog transmission scheme. This uses a digital audio packetized transmission scheme. One of the benefits of using our system is we've increased the number of channels that can fit in an unused UHF TV channel by 50%. We're in a single unused UHF TV channel, you might have been able to fit in eight analog wireless microphone systems. Now you can fit in 12 using our system. And the more unused UHF channels, you can keep adding channels and channels and channels. If you've got the spectrum, you can keep adding signals. So especially in a very crowded wireless city like New York City, this is a big deal. Because our video division is very tightly integrated with our audio division, we said, wouldn't it be cool if you could take a wireless microphone system and integrate it into the camera? So in fact, that's what we did with many of our cameras. They have a slot in for the wireless receiver where the AES audio signal gets right into the camera without the need for external cables. And the battery is all there. You can even look at certain functionality and status displays on the flip out screen of the camera. We have pre-programmed frequency groups. Here's an interesting thing, we have encryption in this digital system, which means that I can have a transmitter, it is paired with only one receiver, and nobody else can listen to it. Or I can take one transmitter and pair it with multiple receivers that all have the encryption key entered in it. This is not only good for corporate work where you don't want somebody to hear what you're doing, but imagine you're doing TV production or film production, and there's somebody off to the side and you're using analog wireless. They could be recording the entire script, and they could tell the world what the movie plot is a year or two before the movie even comes out. That could bust your budget for your movie real quickly. So here you can do your entire field production with encrypted digital audio and prevent that from happening. We have remote control capability. I'll get into that in a minute. We have an interchangeable capsule design. We have a cross remote system that makes it easy to adjust transmission settings while you're on the fly in the middle. Remote control supports simple system operation. Basically it means that in addition to the audio, going just from the transmitter on the left over to the receiver on the right, as you would expect a wireless transmitter to do. We also have metadata coming over so that you can look at things like battery status and the name of that transmission channel that you can assign and all that stuff. But we also have a remote control capability where from the receiver, you can control and change things on the transmitter. All of a sudden you hear noise, the receiver will look for available open frequencies and say, oh, that one's clean send its frequency over to the transmitter, reset everything, and you're good to go within about three seconds instead of stopping and waiting and going to talk to the talent or you can't do it because you're in the middle of a shoot. That can really help. So in that remote control capable, you can adjust the attenuator level, reset low cut filters. You can see obviously how much remaining battery time, reassign the transmission channel. And the bottom one, which I think is really cool, if you've wired up talent and you've buried their wireless microphone and their lob and their body pack all inside, and now it's time for a one hour lunch break, you gotta go up and say, excuse me, can I dig in there and find the power switch? So remotely from the receiver, you just go, turn off the transmitter. And you've now powered down and saved your battery for as long as you'd like, get back on set, remote power it back up. Very cool feature. So you can use this DWX in broadcasting, live theater and concert people are using it, news gathering, obviously. I have a quick list of some of the people, just so that you know, that have been using our DWX system. The BBC in England has standardized on our DWX series. Hearst Station, CBS Broadcast, NBC Universal, Below, Comcast, Turner, Disney, even the White House is using it on 20 XDCAM systems. They're big into the encryption side of things, if you can imagine. So a lot of people are using DWX. It's a brilliant system. If you get a chance, I hope you have a chance to play with it. 
We have a rack unit that has two channels built into it. We have software that can allow you to control many, many channels at once and memorize settings. We even have a portable rig that if you don't have a camera and you just want something to power it and use it that way, you can do that. There's multiple capsules that you can change to for different pickup patterns of the camera and it uses a standard common industry thread. So if you like somebody else's capsule, by all means, put it on our transmitters. Again, transmission quality, encryption, bandwidth efficiency, these are all things that really make a very high quality wireless system, and it's digital. Sound quality, remote control functions, open architecture, very robust transmission and very, very affordable. We even currently have a promotion on where if you buy one of the cameras listed, a 400 or a 320, and you buy a transmitter, either the handheld or the body pack, you get free of charge the dual channel receiver. Very cool. And our final last little jewel that I like to see, if you haven't heard about it or seen it, is our brand new 4K PXW Z100 camcorder. This is it. This is a true 4K camcorder at a street price of about $6,500. This is an amazing piece of technology. If you thought 4K was out of your reach, it's not so anymore. If you want to try playing with 4K, editing with 4K, doing all the things that 4K allows for, this camera is here, full 4K 4096 2160 or QFHD, and it records up to 60p at up to 600 megabits per second. It uses the XAVC Intra 422 10-bit codec in MXF file format, and it has an upgrade path to the consumer variant of XAVC, which is XAVC-S. It uses a slightly smaller than half-inch image sensor, but it's an XMOR R sensor to keep its low light capability as high as possible. It uses our own Sony G lenses, and it has a Wi-Fi remote control capability we talked about, it has 3G SDI out and slow and quick recording. So that's it, everybody. Thanks for hanging in there. It was kind of an awful lot of data, and I appreciate your time. Thank you.